Hello, we want to look at why statistics in educational planning. One we want to know, why do we talk about statistics in educational planning? Let's see quickly what happens. First is to identify the quality and quantity of available resources. Remember earlier on, I did mention that planning is done in a way wherever you have to allocate resources. A scarce resources, not just resources, it's a resource that is scarce to solve educational problem or challenges. So here, it helps you to identify the quality and quantity of available resources. If you know the quantity or the quality of available resources, it will help you to know how you're going to share such resources. It helps you to identify the quality and quantity of resources required. Now, if you know the available resources, the next thing is to know amount of these resources that is required and how you're going to share the resources. For example, we each time we talk about quality of education, we always mention lack of funds or inadequate funding. Inadequate funding can come in the area of primary education, secondary education, tertiary education. But right now you need to find out, okay, where are the resources available for primary, for secondary, for tertiary? So with that you will know where to allocate the resources. Now the first one, you've known the resources that are available. The second one is to find out how the quantity and the quality of resources that are required so that you can allocate the resources available to the required resources. To identify the gap between the current state and the objective. Remember there is always a benchmark and there is always an objective that is set. So when you carry out uh, educational analysis, it helps you to bring out the gap where you ought to be and where you are now. When you look at where you are now, where you ought to be, the difference is the gap. And that is where you will now know what is required as a planner to fill in that gap. Is it policy? Before you get into a policy, you would have carried out some analysis, some statistical analysis that will help you arrive at the right policy. If not, you may go into a wrong policy that will not all go well for the nation and the educational system. Now, the next one we look at is to identify the areas of educational priority with guide formulation of educational policies. Because when you're talking about education, education, you want to invest into education. Now we need to prioritize. You need to know the different areas where you need to invest in, in education. Education is broad, but you need to find out, like I did mention a while ago, you have the different levels. You have the primary, secondary, and the tertiary level. It's likely that the primary level has been taken care of. You need to take care of the middle level, which is the secondary. Or it's likely is the primary level that is lacking, and other levels have been taken care of. So when you do this, it will help you to prioritize. Or yes, all the levels need one thing or the other. But however, at a time, depending on what is available, which one is most urgent, it will help you to prioritize. And it's only through statistics you get to know this. For example, if you are looking at uh, the facilities that are available, you go around schools to see, assess the number of facilities that are there. And from there, you get to know the schools that are really need, in need of a facility that need to be before and those that will come later after them. Again, we look at to identify educational challenges which will lead to the finding ways of solving the challenges. I've already mentioned that, I've discussed that. Therefore, educational projection and forecasting, this will equally help you to project and forecast what is going to be. If you know what it is now and you have been able to know where the gap is, you now know what to do to be able to get to where you ought to be. That is why you have to go into uh, the statistics to be able to know what you need in the future to succeed. Let's take it for example quickly. Right now we are talking, oh, our educational system is this, is that. Now you need to find out what is wrong with the system. What do you need to do that in the future, very near future, the educational system will be right. Then the next one is to evaluate the programs. You, furthermore, you can carry out use statistics.
to evaluate educational programs. Because you can't have statistics to find, okay, this program that we are embarked on, is it actually succeeding? Now let's take, for example, we have the 6334 before we change to the new system. Now that period of 6334 is a program, that a policy that came up to have that program to run in that order. Then you can carry out an evaluation to find out if that 6334 succeeded or not. And if it didn't, why did it not succeed? These are areas, these are things that statistics can help you to bring out that will now project other planning. And it's likely from what the researchers did, the educational planners, it was discovered that it was not really succeeding. That was why the change, that now you had a six years in second, the primary, the six years in primary school, and the first three years is now added to basic that you roll through nine years at a go.